hypercortisolism. What is it and why should you care? It might be the reason that you or some of your doctors are struggling to control your diabetes despite taking multiple medications and making lifestyle modifications. But don't feel bad if you haven't heard of it. I even had to educate Steve on it just the other day. And here's some footage of that conversation. You recorded it? Yep, roll the clip. Hey, Steve, how's it going? It's going okay, but I'm frustrated. About a quarter of my patients with type two that I've been following for a long time, I can't get their diabetes under control. Well, you know, Steve, have you considered- And you know, they're it? also on blood pressure pills, but their blood pressure, I cannot get it to normal. Have you considered that- You it know, might... they just can't lose weight. Yeah, it might actually- Even on the highest dose of Monjaro. That's the perfect example. You know what? I think I'm suspicious that they may not be taking their meds. Steve! What? Have you considered it might be hypercortisolism? Hyper what? <laughs> it's hypercortisolism. The cortisol levels that are too high, it's more common than we thought, and there's actually medications now that can help. Sounds like I need to learn more about this condition. Yeah, it sounds like you're not a very good doctor. That was hurtful. I'm sorry. But let me tell you about this hypercortisol thing, bud. Well, thanks, Steve, for being a good sport, playing the bad doctor. We know that you're a very, very good doctor. Um, but we wanted to highlight that that situation we just showed is very common, um, but it can be really frustrating for the patient because often years can go by before they get this diagnosis that there's actually a cortisol problem. So that's why we wanted to talk about this. Yeah, thing. and it wouldn't be unusual if if, if your doctor thought you were being non-compliant yeah. with the medications. And this is a condition that's very hard to diagnose and it takes years sometimes to get the right diagnosis. So here we are. So it's number one. What is cortisol? Well, cortisol is a steroid hormone, often referred to as the stress hormone. It's produced by the adrenal glands. These are glands that actually sit right on top of your kidney. Renal is another word for Mine's kidney. Back. Mine's back here. Yeah, sorry. Uh, <laughs> renal is another <laughs> word for kidney. And adrenal just kind of means on top of the kidneys. You get these two little lumps on top of the kidneys. Um, and cortisol plays a crucial role in regulating uh, many bodily functions, including the stress response, kind of what we call fight or flight, metabolism, immune function. And while it's essential for normal uh, bodily functions, chronically elevated levels can contribute to various health issues that we'll get into. And cortisol is like a, it's a, a naturally producing hormone, but it's like taking prednisone or hydrocortisone. So if you've ever taken one of those medications and you have diabetes, you know your blood sugars just go through the roof. So if you have levels that are too high coming from your body, Obviously, it makes sense that your, your diabetes might be way more difficult to control. Some of you with asthma always get a short course of steroids, and that knocks, that, you know, that takes care of those symptoms, but then you don't take it over the long term. Yeah. All right. Number two, how common are high cortisol levels? We're talking specifically in people with diabetes here. And these, these studies have been done um, in people with type two diabetes. We don't really have data on type ones, but it's probably a component of type one diabetes also. But up to one out of four patients with what we call difficult to treat type two diabetes have high cortisol levels. So what does is, what is difficult to treat mean? It just means that you know your A1C is not where you want it to be despite being on multiple medications, you're taking them, your doctor or your provider keeps adding them, you're not getting kind of controlled. Also, excess blood pressure. Mm -hmm. You're on one or two blood pressure agents and you cannot seem to get it under control. Yeah. And the other thing is really difficult to lose weight. Yeah. And specifically, if you're on one of these new GLP-1 drugs like Monjaro or Zempic, and you're not responding normally, like everyone else you see on television, there might be, you, they might have hypercortisolism. So number three, when to suspect high cortisol levels? So first of all, this is something you're very likely gonna have to advocate for yourself as a patient. Going into your doctor, your provider, hey, something doesn't seem right. Good point. I have these things that we just talked about. My diabetes is not being controlled. I have high blood pressure on multiple meds and high cholesterol. I cannot lose weight. I don't even respond to these GLP-1s. Can you please consider maybe you know something else or seeing I heard about this high cortisol thing? Um, can we look into that? All right, so number four, how do you diagnose it? Well, Steve mentioned it's it's difficult. It, it's just kind of nuanced. So basically, you need to measure your cortisol levels, but the problem with cortisol is that they fluctuate a lot throughout the day. So if you just got a random cortisol level, we wouldn't know how to interpret it. 
So you have to do something called a dexamethasone suppression test. And what that is, is that you go in uh, first thing in the morning for a blood test. However, the night before, your doctor needs to give you a one milligram tablet of dexamethasone, which is a steroid that should naturally kind of suppress the amount of cortisol that's coming from your adrenal glands. So a normal result would be you take the dexamethasone, we have a little graphic showing when you would take it, usually around 11 p.m. midnight, um, and then you get your blood draw first thing in the morning. A normal result would be that your cortisol is undetectable. You can't see it, it's been completely suppressed. However, if you have this kind of hypercortisolism problem, the dexamethasone isn't able to suppress your normal kind of adrenal gland amount and your cortisol levels will still be detectable. So that's, that's what it is. It's literally taking a pill at night and getting a blood test, but it, it, it requires a little bit more prep than a typical kind of lab draw. Yeah. All right, Steve, so you just got your dexamethasone suppression test, DST, done. You convinced your provider you need to get this done. You know, if the result is normal, if it's negative, then, you know, you kind of focus on other things. If it's abnormal, cortisol is still high, what might next steps be? Yeah, the next steps will be your doctor will do some tests, probably scans, to find out the source of the excess cortisol. Most likely, it's from your adrenal gland, but it can come from other areas. All right, so number five, are there treatments available? And of course there's treatments for diabetes, blood pressure, cholesterol. But Steve, is there anything specific for high cortisol levels? Yes, there is. There's one drug called Corlim. And in a large clinical trial, they gave it to people with hypercortisolism and oh my gosh, it lowered their A1C, it helped them get off medications they didn't need anymore, blood pressure, diabetes, and it helped them lose weight and it improved their lipid levels. Yeah. So, you know, it, everything hypercortisolism caused, it helped reverse it back towards normal. And this is all, all, honestly made like kind of a big splash in the, the diabetes community. We didn't realize how prevalent this was. So we're really trying to educate, you know, providers too on who to screen, how to do it. And then if people are positive, there's specific treatments for it. So now that you've been armed with this information, if you feel like this is a ringing a bell for you, like, gosh, yeah, I just can't get my diabetes under control. My doctor's beating me up. Now you have something to kind of like think about as, as another potential diagnosis with some really successful treatment options. Yeah, and be prepared for your doctor to have a deer in the headlight <laughs> look, and you're there to educate him or her. Yeah. It wouldn't be unusual. So we wanna hear from you guys. Have you had any experience with this? Talking to your providers about high cortisol, treating it, all those things. Please let us know and we will absolutely respond. And be sure to like and follow, subscribe to our YouTube channels, Facebook, Instagram, all those kinds of things. Uh, we really appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one.